This is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321 and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at one of the inks that came in my little Ferris Wheel Press ink charger set. The three little ink vials come in a heavy cardboard box that has a, a strong magnetic closure. There are three ink samples in it. Each ink sample looks like a battery. They contain five milliliters of ink. They're made in Canada. And this first ink sample is Bluegrass Velvet. This is one of the first inks that I saw profiled on Chris Sine's channel that really got me interested in trying out Ferris Wheel Press. And I'm just now getting to this ink. One thing I need to mention about these sample vials is they are very full when you first open it and the opening of the vial is very small. These are glass vials and a standard size number six nib, like a number six replacement nib, does not fit in the mouth of this vial. And my number five nibs fit in it okay, except for my Sailor LeCool. The nib on it is a little wider than usual and it would not fit into the mouth of that opening. I have to give a quick disclaimer before I get started. Teal and turquoise inks don't show up very accurately on video. If you want to get a better idea of what this ink looks like, do a web search and try to find uh, images that have been color corrected. The purpose of this video is to give you an idea of how the ink performs in different size nibs and on different types of paper, how it feels to write with this ink. So I'll be doing a writing sample on this 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. Then I'll show a writing sample that I already did on 20 pound copy paper. I'll show some inks from my collection that are similar to Bluegrass Velvet. And finally, I'll take a look at the results of my water resistance test. I'm going to begin with my Pilot 78G+. It has a stainless steel extra fine nib. nice and smooth especially since this is such a fine nib normally with a nib this fine I would just put that it's nice but this is exceptionally smooth and I like how vibrant and legible this ink is in this very fine nib next I'll be writing with a Sailor LeCool it has a stainless steel medium fine nib. This is a nice size nib for this ink. It's nice and legible. I wouldn't call this smooth. There was a little bit of feedback, but it was very nice to write with. Next I'll be writing with my Pilot Stargazer. It has a 14 karat medium nib. This is a, a very wet nib and it is very smooth. Normally this size nib I prefer writing on either five millimeter graph paper or six or seven millimeter line paper, but even with this being a little bit cramped, it's still pretty pleasant. Let me let me try some reverse writing real quick. Um, 
that's just a little too fine. Next I'll be writing with a Pilot Pluminix. It has a stainless steel cursive medium nib. The nib's running a little bit dry, especially compared to the Stargazer, but it feels nice and smooth, at least on this Tomoe River paper. Next I've got a Caveco Lily Put. It has a stainless steel broad nib. Nice and wet. It's smooth, but not as glassy smooth as the Pluminix was. This was a little more velvety. And I noticed that on some of the other writing samples. I want to see what the reverse writing looks like on this nib. That's much better. That takes it from a broad nib to a fine or extra fine. And it's very nice. And it's very practical. Um, there are lots of situations where a broad nib is just too big. And this is one of them. These little small 4 millimeter grids. The reverse writing fits in there nice and comfortably. And finally I've got a Jinhao X750. It has a 1.5 stainless steel replacement nib. Okay, this has already dried out and I've had I've had some trouble with this stub nib. It's almost like the ink is running backwards in the feed because I have dipped it. There. And yeah, that that seems to be exactly what's happening. The ink is flowing the wrong way in the feed. By the way, I dip the pens in ink to do these writing samples. I don't ink up a converter. Under most circumstances, probably 95% of the time, the ink behaves in the nib when it's been dipped, just like it would if a converter has been filled up with ink. But on a few rare occasions, like this 1.5 millimeter stub nib, it doesn't behave exactly like it would if the converter was inked up. Okay, while that dries, let's take a look at the copy paper. On my 20 pound copy paper, the 1.5 stub nib and the Caveco broad nib were very comfortable to write with. The letters look a little ragged, but not much feathering. The Pluminix did feel a little scratchy and we saw that it was kind of dry even on the Tomoe River paper. On this paper it felt like the nib slit was catching on the paper as I wrote but the Stargazer was really nice and for the Lacool I was kind of debating between it wasn't exactly smooth but it, it didn't have a a lot of feedback so I marked both of those out it was nice it was pleasant to write with and so was the stargazer there was just a a little bit of feedback in the stargazer the pilot 78 G though the extra fine did feel a little scratchy you can see this was another one of those inks that just soaked into the paper very quickly and that's probably why this extra fine nib felt scratchy that ink soaked into the paper and it's like you're writing on wet paper and when you're writing with a nib that's nearly like a needle on wet paper, yeah, it's going to catch on it. But surprisingly, it didn't bleed through very much at all. Look at those broader, wetter nibs. So this is a, in this case, the Stargazer, I would classify that as a slightly broader nib. The broader nibs 
were the ones that performed the best. Ferris wheel press was most similar to Lamy Amazonite and Three Oysters Peacock Green. And these are all blues that lean a little bit toward the green side. They probably look a little more blue than they actually are in real life. They probably look a little more blue on the screen. Now, a couple of inks that actually are just slightly more blue than Ferris Wheel Press Blue Velvet are Sailor Manyo Yamagi and Jacarbon Blue Plenitude. Those two are just slightly, slightly more blue than these three inks. Bluegrass Velvet had no water resistance. The swatch that I did with my tweezers was pretty uniform. Now the little drip of ink that I usually get at the end of the swatch had a, just the tiniest bit of pink sheen. I saw a little bit of that pink sheen with the Pilot Stargazer since it was such a wet rider. I saw some shading and in the heavier parts of the words that pink sheen and in the Caveco broad I'm seeing a little bit of that sheen. Let's see what the back of this page looks like. Even on the heaviest parts of the swatch it didn't even come close to bleeding through and the show through wasn't too bad with this ink either. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.